Urban exploring is far more frightening than most people realize. Today I'm exploring a ghoulish aquarium and an urban explorer who helped solve a murder. The Creepy Aquarium This is what urban exploring is all about. A zombie shark and an abandoned aquarium. Just check out the shocking footage taken by urban explorer Georges Urbex during a visit to Spain. The 24-year-old French adventurer climbed over a squid corpse to reach the forgotten mummified carcass of a long-dead shark. How exactly does an aquarium get abandoned with dead animals still inside it? The urban explorer did not reveal the location of the aquarium so that copycat didn't follow in her footsteps. However, the aquarium is definitely somewhere in Spain. It's believed to have closed down in 2014 after the building was hit by a wave. The living animals would have been transferred to a new aquarium. But some specimens may have already been dead, like the zombie shark still floating in a broken glass box. There were some other doomed creatures within the abandoned building as well. The explorer came across an octopus and a squid previously preserved in shattered glass jars. Just like the shark though, these creatures were already dead when the aquarium shut down. It was likely they had been preserved in formaldehyde and put on display. The creepy discovery is reminiscent of urban explorer Luke McPherson. Luke came across a mummified great white shark suspended in formaldehyde at an abandoned park in Australia in 2018. The Graveyard There is an abandoned graveyard in the Scottish Highlands that has almost been totally reclaimed by nature. It dates back about 400 years and doesn't appear to be getting a makeover anytime soon. The spooky yet oddly beautiful graveyard was uncovered by an urban explorer on TikTok whose account is Escapade Z. The explorer goes all over Scotland looking for abandoned places to expose. Places that have been forgotten and are on their way to oblivion. The video posted is less than a minute, but it's long enough to get a feel of the crumbling cemetery. The urban explorer ventured through the Scottish woods to find this place. You can see ferns growing over the graves of people who are presumably still underground in their rotting caskets. The tombstones are covered in moss and trees tower above the ground like silent sentinels. Most of the graves are too eroded to read, though the beauty of their decorations has yet to fade. There is also a mausoleum here that appears to be gradually sinking into the earth. Some graves are for a single person, while others seem to contain entire families. The earliest date on a tombstone the explorer found was 1620. It's a spooky and endearing piece of history despite the fact it is filled with bones. The graveyard is also one of many that can be found across Scotland. According to the Scottish government, there are over 2,200 burial grounds scattered across its 32 local authorities. Many of them are historical, meaning they're no longer in use. There aren't enough resources to take care of all these abandoned cemeteries, leading to places just like this. Have you ever come across the ruins of the cemetery in your local neighborhood? If so, don't forget to tell me about it in the comments. The Murder Trial It doesn't happen a lot, but sometimes urban exploring can accidentally entangle you with a murder investigation. It happened to James Fenton when he went poking around an industrial estate in Fife, Scotland in 2020. Now a man is behind bars, his murder plot spoiled by a nosy urban explorer. James was with his partner and some friends hoping to get cool pictures of the abandoned buildings. He had learned about the industrial estate because he'd gotten some work done to his car there and noticed certain derelict units. When he and his group peeked into one particularly unkempt property, they found what looked like bones. At first, they thought they'd come across some animal bones. Then they saw the human skull. It became very obvious that the urban explorers had just stumbled upon a dead body. Naturally, James and his friends contacted the police. It turned out they had indeed discovered a real human body. It was the corpse of 61-year-old Ian Coots. Now let me introduce you to a cold-blooded killer, a man who seems to have no soul behind his eyes. His name is David Barnes, 33 years old. In September 2019, David killed Ian Coots, an army veteran. David transported Ian's body in a wheelie bin, dumped it in his trunk, then drove to the industrial estate. He found an empty room to dump the body, where it remained for a year until it was found by happenstance. If it hadn't been for James and his love for urban exploring, the body could still be in that derelict room. David Barnes tried to cover his tracks by burning the body. Police had to use facial reconstruction to properly identify Ian Coots. As for a motive, jurors were told that David killed Ian and assumed his identity. He got away with between 7,000 and 10,000 US dollars, which he used to go on a shopping spree. David Barnes has since been convicted of murder. 
but his sentence will not be determined until later this December. The Lost Silverware Christian Lorb is a resident of North Vancouver in British Columbia. One of his favorite pastimes is collecting vintage items. He isn't necessarily an urban explorer, but Christian will do anything within the acceptable realms of the law to collect his antiques. When he got a tip about a mysterious car buried in the forest, he joined up with a local urban explorer to check it out. They found silverware. It might not seem that exciting to everyone, but it was a seriously cool discovery for Christian. He and his urban explorer friend dug up over 120 pieces of silverware from the mossy forest floor. The silverware was stamped with Hotel Vancouver and appeared to be from around the 1940s. All the pieces of silverware were buried in a shallow hole in the middle of absolute nowhere. Some of the pieces were worn and deteriorated, but others appeared in immaculate condition. For someone who loves vintage items, this was a treasure trove. But what is the Hotel Vancouver? It was a hotel that opened in 1939 and is still around today, only it's called the Fairmont Hotel Vancouver. It's a massive building that dominates West Georgia Street in the financial district. The words stamped on the silverware were part of the hotel's original logo. But the logo changed in the 1960s. You can't find vintage relics from the hotel with the original stamp on them anymore. But why were they buried in a pit in the forest? That is the bigger question, and one that Christian has yet been able to answer. They were obviously dumped in the hole on purpose. But by whom? Was it an angry chef who quit his job? Were they part of a bizarre heist that nobody's ever heard of? The Creepy Estate Sean Piper from England recently revealed footage on social media of a creepy abandoned housing estate he found in Woolwich, London. It's such a creepy building that it looks like something that would be left over at the end of the world. Sean found abandoned children's toys and the mementos of long-forgotten families. The place Sean was exploring is a decrepit, run-down housing estate with 172 individual dwellings. The dwellings are spread across a whopping 16 blocks of apartments. The whole place is condemned and needs to be torn down. It looks like it could be used as a background for an episode of The Walking Dead or Resident Evil. As you can probably imagine, 172 abandoned apartments are going to contain some seriously wacky stuff. But for some reason, there was an abundance of children's toys, basketballs, rocking horses, plastic baby cars, and stuffed bunnies covered in what looked like it could be blood. The estate has been empty since at least 2010. There is plenty of documentation for what happened and what was supposed to happen. It took a year for the local council to get everyone out. They offered rent as either a one-time payment to move or reduced rent in a new building somewhere. The plan was to demolish the place and then build new luxury apartments. Unfortunately for the company planning on developing it, they hit a snag. It's been 13 years and they kicked everybody out for no reason. The buildings are fenced off and still waiting to be demolished. Inside are the broken dreams of the people forced to leave. Locked in Albania the craziest case in modern urban exploration is currently unfolding in Europe. Lana Sater was arrested while urban exploring in Albania in August 2022. She spent nine months trapped in a horrifying Albanian jail. I don't want to say anything bad about Albania because it's a beautiful country with a beautiful people and a rich culture, but its jails aren't exactly world-renowned. For a young woman who just wanted to take pictures, an Albanian jail is about the worst place she could have ended up. But did she deserve the jail time? Because according to the Albanian authorities, Lana Seta, real name Svetlana Timofeeva, was a Russian spy. 34-year-old Lana was captured entering a former communist military factory about 50 miles from the capital of Tirana. The factory, called Gramsci, was fully functional when Albania was under communist rule over 30 years ago. The factory produced weapons, specifically Russian AK-47s. These days, it's a rundown industrial building with bare concrete walls and a depressing atmosphere. Lana, or Svetlana, it depends which name you want to use, entered the facility to take pictures for her social media following. She has over 250,000 followers on Instagram. Lana claims she only visited the site because she wanted to film buildings from the Cold War era. It's a completely believable story for someone who's a full-time urban explorer. I mean, what could she have possibly been spying on? The facility has been abandoned since the fall of the Soviet Union. It's not like it contains secrets of national security. Or does it?
As soon as she entered the premises, Sater was arrested on suspicion of spying. Albanian prosecutors said the police discovered cameras and drones, along with maps and $6,000 in cash. Cash and cameras are not unusual for urban explorers to have. They need maps to know where they're going, and they use drones to take aerial photographs. And yes, they need cash to eat food and pay for hotels. Yet when Lana went to court, she was charged with espionage. The charge resulted in nine months in jail and her investigation is still pending. She was recently released from prison but still hasn't been fully acquitted. I'm not usually one to weigh in on issues, but I will say this in Lana's defense. She has published two photography books from her urban exploring. She's photographed abandoned locations across over 30 countries. This is her career and it does involve visiting abandoned sites from the former Soviet Union. In 2012, she even snuck into a Russian rocket factory. So what do you think? Is Lana a spy or was the case blown way out of proportion? Unexpected documents A group of urban explorers were checking out an abandoned police station when they found some seriously disturbing documents. These shocking documents involved the deaths of four people and resulted in one man being arrested. Yet again, this shocking tale of urban exploration takes us to England. At the forsaken Hevertree Road police station in Exeter, a group of men snuck through the unlocked window. Inside the building, which has been boarded up since around 2012, the group uncovered a folder containing details nobody had expected to find. It's unclear why the cops would have left such an important folder in the abandoned building, but there it was. The folder's documents contained information into the investigation of a 17-year-old girl who died in 2004, along with three other people. Information such as the circumstances of her death, witness statements, and graphic photographs from the crime scene. The video of the explorers in the police station was uploaded on August 6, 2023. On August 10, officers arrested a man in his 50s on suspicion of burglary. You can't just sneak into an abandoned police station and upload images of sensitive documents, especially not documents pertaining to somebody's death. You definitely cannot publicly release pictures from a crime scene because you found them in a building that you aren't even supposed to be in. The man who was arrested hasn't been identified. He was charged with burglary and unlawful obtaining and disclosure of personal data. The House of Dolls Why is it that dolls are so creepy? If you have an answer, please let me know in the comments. There's just something about dolls that seriously freaks people out, but I can't put my finger on it. Dolls are what makes the abandoned home discovered in Toronto, Canada so frightening. Urban explorer Dave uncovered a mysterious house packed to the brim with enough dolls to haunt your nightmares for the rest of eternity. Dave has kept his last name private because it's not technically legal to break into abandoned houses, regardless of whether they're filled with cool stuff. He got a tip-off about the house from one of his followers, then followed up on it. Inside, he discovered a boggling collection of dolls. Fabric dolls, plastic dolls, porcelain dolls. You name it, they were in this house. The floors were strewn with doll parts, random arms, and clumps of doll hair. Eyeballs staring up at the explorer as he tiptoed through the structure. It is believed the dolls were made by the owner of the home, a woman who had a doll obsession before she left the house abandoned. There were some less creepy things found inside too, like old Marvel comics and collectibles from the old Star Trek TV show. Have you ever gone urban exploring before? If so, let me know all about it in the comments. Thanks for watching, and if you liked the video, be sure to subscribe. Come back soon for more great stuff from the channel.